Chapter 11, Section 6. Why is the notion of discovery contradictory? <laughs> Ayn Rand indicates the illogical and contradictory nature of the concepts of discovering natural law and the natural rights this discovery argument creates when she stated that her theory was objective. Her objectivist political theory, quote, holds that good is neither an attribute of things in themselves nor man's emotional state, but an evaluation of the facts of reality by man's consciousness according to a rational standard of value. The objective theory holds that the good is an aspect of reality in relation to man and that it must be discovered, not invented by man. Capitalism, the unknown ideal, page 22. This is playing with words. This is semantics. If something is discovered, then it has always been there. And so is an intrinsic part of it. If good is discovered by man, then good exists independently of people. It's waiting to be discovered. In other words, good is an attribute of man as man, of things in themselves. In addition... Such a theory also implies that there's just one possible interpretation of what is good for all of humanity. This can be seen when Rand talks about her system of <laughs> objective values and rights. When discussing the difference between subjective, intrinsic, and objective values, Rand noted that intrinsic and subjective theories, quote, make it possible for a man to believe what is good is independent of man's mind and can be achieved by physical force. In other words, intrinsic and subjective values justify tyranny. However, her objective values are placed squarely in man's nature. She states that individual rights are the means of subordinating society to moral law, and the source of man's rights is man's nature. Capitalism, the Unknown Ideal, page 320 and 322. She argues that the intrinsic theory that holds hold uh, the intrinsic theory holds that the good is inherent in certain things or actions as such, regardless of their context and consequences, regardless of any benefit or injury they may cause to the actors and subjects involved. According to the concise Oxford Dictionary, intrinsic is defined as inherent, essential, belonging naturally, and defines nature as a thing's, a person's, innate or essential qualities or character. In other words, if, as Rand maintains, man's rights are the product of man's nature, then such rights are by definition intrinsic. And if Rand maintains such rights are the extension of morality into the social system, then morality itself must also be intrinsic. Again, her ideology fails to meet her own tests. I mean, who would have guessed? Ayn Rand not being up to the task. And opens the way for some more tyranny. Hey, this can be seen by her wholehearted support for wage slavery, her total lack of concern how it and concentrations of wealth and power affect individuals subjected to them. For all, uh, for, uh, for after all, what is good is inherent in capitalism, regardless of context, consequences, benefits, or injuries it may cause to the actors and subjects involved. The key to understanding her contradictory and, well, illogical lies, uh, ideolo uh, ideology lies in her contradictory use of the word man. Sometimes she uses it to describe individuals, but usually it's used to describe the human race collectively, man's nature, man's consciousness. But man does not have a consciousness. Only individuals do. Man is an abstraction. It's individuals who live and think, not man. Such man worship, like natural law, has all of the markings of religion. As Max Stirner argues, liberalism is religion because it separates my essence from me and sets it above me because it exalts man to the same extent as any other religion does God. It sets me beneath man. The ego in its own, page 176. Indeed, he who is infatuated with man leaves persons out of account so far as that infatuation extends and floats in an ideal sacred interest. Man, you see, is not a person, but an ideal. A spook. 
page 79, the ego in its own. Rand argues that we must evaluate the facts of reality by man's consciousness according to a rational standard of value. But who determines that value? She states that values are not determined by fiat nor by majority vote. But, however, neither can they be determined by man or man's consciousness because man does not exist. Individuals exist and have consciousness because they are unique and have differing values. Being social creatures, these values are generalized across individuals into social, i.e. objective values. So the abstraction man does not exist. And because of this, we see the healthy side of different individuals convincing others of their ideas and theories by discussion, presenting facts, and rational debate. This can be best seen in scientific debate. Ooh, don't mention that to the Austrian economists, So, The aim of the scientific method is to invent theories that explain facts. The theories are not a part of the facts, but created by the individual's mind in order to explain those facts. Such scientific laws can and do change in light of new information and new thought. In other words, the scientific method is the creation of subjective theories that explain objective facts. Rand's method is literally the opposite. She assumes man's nature, discovers what is good from those assumptions, and draws her theories by deduction from that. This is the literal exact opposite of the scientific method, and as already noted, comes straight from the Roman Catholic Church. It is the subjective revolt by individuals against what is considered objective fact or common sense which creates progress and develops ethics, what, are, what is considered good and right by society. This in turn becomes accepted fact until the next free thinker comes along and changes how we view the world by presenting new evidence, reevaluating old ideas and facts, or exposing the evil effects associated with certain ideas and the social relationships they reflect by argument, fact, and passion. Attempts to impose an evaluation of the facts by reality, by man's consciousness, would be a death blow to this process of critical thought development, and evaluation of the facts of reality by individuals' consciousness. Human thought would be subsumed by dogma. And uh, if you have made it this far, if you've made it to the end of this playlist, one, credit where credit's due, mad props. And two, let me just wrap this entire series up by just stating this unequivocally, beyond the shadow of a doubt, and caps are not, have never been, and will never be anarchists. Fuck the lot of you. I'm out.